Hi and welcome to this video on parallel lines and transversals, maths made easy. Now when we're talking about parallel lines and transversals, the terminology that we use is quite important. So what we're going to do in this video is go through this terminology. First of all, let's have a look at vertical angles. What do we mean by vertical angles? So these are angles that are directly across. And are alternate angles. And vertical angles are always congruent which means they are the same. So in this example, if we have a look at vertical angles, we mean this angle here, this angle here, those two are vertical angles, and then similarly, this angle here, and this angle here, those are vertical angles. If we want to draw these angles in this video, in this video we're going to use dots, red dots, to represent vertical angles. So in this case, these two red dots are vertical angles and these two green dots are vertical angles. So the red dots are the same, so those angles are congruent, they're the same, and where the green dots are, those, dot, uh, those angles are vertical angles, and they're congruent. Now let's have a look at supplementary angles. What do we mean by supplementary angles? So, a supplementary angle if we have this as 120 degrees and this is the supplementary angle X so supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees so X is 180 minus 120 which is 60 degrees Complementary angles. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So if we have this as 50 degrees and we want to know what is x degrees. So x degrees is 90 minus 50 which is 40 degrees. Here we have our vertical angles in red and then also in green In this diagram we can see our parallel lines which are here and here crossed by a transversal. All a transversal does is cross the line and this case is a special case where we have two lines which are parallel crossed by a transversal and the angles that are formed are special because they fall into pairs. So let's have a look at this special case. So if we label the angles 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, we can see that there are some congruent angles. And these are angle 1, which is here in red and angle 
four. Also angle two and angle three. Angle five, angle eight, and angle six, and angle seven. In this case, we have linear pair angles, and these sum to a hundred and eighty degrees. So again, if we draw our linear pairs, so we have this one and this one, this one and this one, and then in green, this one, this one, and here, and also here. If we label them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can see that the linear pairs of angles which add up to 180 degrees are angle one and angle two. Angle two and angle four will add up to 180 degrees. Angle three and angle four. Angle three and angle 1, angle 5, and angle 6, angle 6, and angle 8, angle 8, and angle 7, and also angle 7, and angle 5. Those are linear pair angles. Now when we're looking at this special case of where a transversal crosses two parallel lines, when we're talking about interior, that's inside here, and the exterior is this part and this part. So this is the interior. And this is the exterior. And also this is the exterior. When we're talking about consecutive interior angles, so consecutive interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So they have a sum of 180 degrees. And what do we mean by consecutive and what do we mean by consecutive interior angles? So as an example, we have angle three and angle five and also angle four and angle six. So they're in the interior and they're consecutive. Three and five, four and six. Okay, let's have a look at alternate exterior angles. Let's first of all label them in our colours, linear pairs, so this is a linear pair and this is a linear pair, again this is a linear pair and this is a linear pair. Now if we label them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, and we're looking at alternate exterior angles. Now, alternate exterior angles are congruent. Which means they are the same. So, 
So let's have a look at a couple of examples. So we have angle 1, which is in the exterior. And we want an alternate one, which is angle 8. So angle 1 and angle 8 are alternate exterior angles and they are congruent. Let's have a look at another one. Angle 2. And then we want the alternate exterior, which is angle 7. So angle 2 and angle 7, alternate exterior angles, and they are the same. So what do we mean by a corresponding angle? In layman's term, it means it's in the same spot. same place at each intersection. Now corresponding angles are congruent So let's have a look at some corresponding angles. First of all, let's do, draw our linear angles. So these are our linear angles in red. These and also in green, these are the same. That's the same as that, and that's the same as that. Now let's number them. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So our corresponding angles, which are congruent, are angle one and angle five. Angle two and angle six. They're in the same spot and they're congruent. Angle 3 and angle 7 and angle 4 and angle 8. So those are our corresponding angles. Now let's have a look at now let's have a look at alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are congruent. they are the same. Okay, on this diagram let's now draw our linear pairs. So that's here and here, we're in red. And also in green, these pairs, which are our linear pairs, which are the same. Now let's label one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now our alternate interior angles, which are in this space between the parallel lines, which are congruent at angle three and angle six, because we missed the four to make it alternate, go to angle six, so angle three and angle six, alternate angles, interior angles, and they are congruent, and also angle four, and angle 5. Angle 4 and angle 5 are the same, they're congruent alternate interior angles.